in your data interoperability, or DIE for short. So let's cover the agenda for today. So for the benefit of those in the audience with no prior experience in working with DIE, uh, I'll start off with the DIE fundamentals, which will consist of three parts. The first part will be an introduction of what DIE interoperability is in the context of ArcGIS. It's licenses and through which ArcGIS software can we use it, and this will be followed by the top few use cases. Next, I will cover spatial ETL tool tips and tricks, which will consist of three parts again. First, I'll cover the workbench and its various components. Then we'll look into the environment and options that can be altered in the tool. This will be followed by some tips and tricks to get you started on using DIE. Finally, we'll go through a sample project of SG Singapore's new office in Alice Medipolis as an example to showcase the capabilities of DIE for ArcGIS. Now let's take a look at what DIE in ArcGIS context is and how it is applicable to you. The ArcGIS data interoperability extension for desktop is an integrated spatial ETL tool. ETL here stands for Extract, Transform, and Load, a toolset that runs with the geoprocessing framework using Safe Software's FME technology. It enables you to integrate data from multiple sources and formats, use the data with geoprocessing tools, and publish it with ArcGIS server. Now, what are the formats that are available? We, of course, have the popular Autodesk format like DWG, AutoCAD, and Revit, followed by Excel, PDF, XML, CityGML, SRE's own proprietary software, as well as a suite of other different formats that are available. Now, the next question we want to ask is, is it a one-to-one -one read and write, or can we do multiple reads and writes in, within the workspace? So DIE supports reading and writing of multiple formats at the same time, and it can be done in a parallel fashion as well. Next question we want to ask is whether the data can be only consumed locally, or can we also assess web data? So local data as well as web services are supported as inputs within the DIE. Now, a general question, what can you do along the way? Like during, uh, when, what, what can you manipulate? So apart from simple read and write to different formats or conversion of formats, you can also do attribute and geometry manipulation within the workspaces. The tool can be automated by using Python and can, can be called from a bad job for scheduling as well. The last and most important question I think everyone wants to ask is, do you have to code? So no coding is required because DIE uses a graphic user interface. Next up, the location. So desktop, in this case, me, refers to ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap, and ArcGIS Catalog. So this is where your extension will be available from. The data interoperability extension for ArcGIS desktop is offered at two licensing levels, which is the concurrent and the single use. Alternatively, users can create their own spatial ETL tools and create their own customized tools as well. If templates of previously used workspaces are available, the FMW files can also be directly imported into the DIE. Let's have a look at the use cases. So now that we have covered DIE, what it is and what we can find, where we can find it, let's have a look at how it can be used. So first up is migration. You can distribute and migrate data between different systems. You can use your mobile apps with ArcGIS API. Collaboration, so you can generate data in business friendly format for different types of users within the company. Next up, we have validation and detection, which allows for cross-format feature interaction. At a feature level, business rules can also be enforced within this. And last is synchronization. So different departments within the organization can leverage on the central repository of data ready to be consumed via different outlets. Now let's, now let's have a look at the tools and trips available. Tricks, sorry. So let's have a look at the workbench for DIE. I'll give you a quick overview of what it consists of and what different sections are available. So first up, we have the menus and controls. You can find most of the command buttons here. Followed by this is the canvas. So this consists of the readers, transformers, and writers you'll be using to construct your workspace. You can additionally add in your comments and bookmarks, certain sections of the canvas. Last up, we have the windows, which consists of the navigator, transformer gallery, locks, and connections. Now, the environmental options that are available within DIE. So in this, uh, we are using FME 2019. The latest release comes with a dark mode, still earlier than iOS. Just a pointer. 
Feature caching is also uh, allowed, and you can run workspaces from point to point. Think of it as breakpoints in your code. So you don't have to run your entire workspace. You can just run it to a certain point and then evaluate it uh, iteratively. Next up, we have FME, compatible FMW source, like I covered earlier. And then we also have database connections. So direct connection to DB is available so that you can directly connect to, for example, a SQL database if you have the credentials to log in. Web connections are also available. So you can connect to web resources directly. These include your cloud services, as well as ArcGIS Online and Portal feature services as well. Next, we have the FME hub connectivity. So downloadable custom transformers that are created by other FME users are available for you to use, download and use directly. I personally find this very useful as there are a lot of transformations that are common to a lot of workflows. Next up, we have Python compatibility. So the ability to use Python within workspace is also available, and you can run the ETL tool using Python command as well. Next up, tips and tricks. So here I will cover a very fast way of how you can create your own workspace from scratch. So first off, you start with dragging data into the workspace. You can drag and drop data from your file browser into your empty FME canvas. And once it's ready, all you need to do is click OK, and this will add a reader feature type to the canvas. Think of it as a feature type as FME's version of layer or table. Next up, you can run workspace to view data as well. So you can click the Run button to complete reading in the data. When the data is read in and can be viewed in the Visual Preview window at the bottom, at any time while building a workspace, you can click the Run button to view the data. Then you can type on the canvas to add your transformer. To modify your data, click anywhere on the canvas and start typing to find a transformer. Select the desired transformer and add it into your workspace. Next, you can modify the transformer parameters. So all you have to do is double click on the transformer to open the parameters. Each transformer will be given different parameters and requires parameter, required parameters will be highlighted. Then you need to add the writer. So this is your output. So you click on the Add Writer button to add your writer. Choose the output format and a location where it can be saved. And finally, you need to run the workspace to write it to your output disk, which can be your database, uh, be it SQL or your local ArcGIS database. Now let's have a look at the case study. So I prepared a sample project to give you a simplistic view of the capabilities of DIE using our new office buildings floor plan at Alice at Mediapolis. So in the sample project, we'll be looking at two workflows. First is a simple conversion from Revit directly to multi-patch format in ArcGIS. And the second tool takes in data from two different inputs and writes it to a prefix output. So first off, we have a lot of Revit files here. So this is the files from our new uh, office building, as my colleague showed you earlier. So I have a linked file here. I'm just going to open it up on Revit here. I think it's going to take a bit of time to load. Let me switch. Let me move on to the workspace itself. So I've created a toolbox within the catalog window. Let me open this up. There you go, extract Revit. So what I have here is a very simplistic uh, conversion from a Revit file to multi-patch. Let this load up. So we have a lot of inputs from the different files like I showed you earlier. Within this workspace, all I'm doing is doing a geometry filter to sieve out all the data that cannot be accepted by my multi-patch, and also doing some attribute manipulation so that I can fit it to my requirements in the multi-patch that I am uh, writing it to. Let's have a look at what the output looks like. As you can see that the symbology that was in the Revit file itself is still retained, and all the all the data that was within the Revit file is also carried over. The difference between this and uh, directly putting in your Revit file to ArcGIS Pro is that here you're allowed to do some manipulation to the data itself, be it geometry or attribute. Now let's look at the second workflow. So I have this uh, Excel sheet with building construction status here. It's going to take a while to load up. So basically what I have here is all the different uh, 
entities within the Revit file itself. And then I have added some scheduled dates of completion of the work. Let's go through this. So let me scroll to the right. I'll show you what I'm. So this is a data that is added by me, the last two columns, end date and status. So I've added this extra status because I want to color code the, the outputs that I show in my multi-patch. So I have in progress, completed, and not started. So all those that are completed, I'm going to show it in gray, multi-patch. And then those that are in progress or not started, I'm going to show it in red. So let me quickly sh shift over to the workspace itself. Let me open up the toolbox. Okay, I've, I think I've already pre-opened this toolbox. Let me switch over to the view. Give me a sec. Okay, so this is what a slightly more advanced uh, workspace looks like. So I have my inputs here, which is the Alice Revit files, as well as the construction status Excel file that I was showing earlier. So I do some filtering because I only want to see the level eight uh, floor plan, which is where my office is located. And then I do some uh, data validation in the next portion in which I sieve out all the data that I require only for my purpose. And then I have three different outputs here. I'm only going to show you one of them. So the output I'm going to show is this. Uh, so I'm going to push all the, the data that uh, all, all, the it all the items that have been installed within the floor itself. So let me switch over to what the output looks like. Okay, so let me move over to the map view. Oh, it looks like the trees have loaded as well. Let's switch over to my output. So don't be alarmed if you see the floor hovering in space. That's just a section of the entire building. Let it load up. So it takes a while to render. There we go. OK, so this is just the eighth floor of our building. We are, let me move in. So what I have here is all the construction items that have been, uh, have already been put into place. And then there are some items that are still currently being constructed. So the status is going to be uh, in progress or has not been completed. So I'm giving you a look at the toilet here, because I think that's the most important part. When you're moving into a new building, if your sanita sanitation facilities are not in order, I don't think there's any point moving into the building. So this looks pretty much acceptable. Let's have a closer look at the red items that are there. So what we have here is, let's move into this. Let's check what this item is here. Looks like a hand dryer to me. Yeah, so this is a hand dryer in the men's toilet. So this hasn't been installed yet. And on the other side, we have soap dispenser. OK, this one. We cannot be shifting into a building without soap dispenser. And handrails are also not constructed. So for, for those uh, older folks or those who are handicapped, this is a very important thing that needs to be there in place, without which I, I don't think it, there's any point moving into a new building. So same goes for this uh, handicapped toilet as well. I think it's pretty much similar here. We again have the dishwasher, soap dispenser, sorry. Soap dispenser, uh, the hand dryer, as well as the railings that are, they have not been installed. So basically, that's, that's my demo. It's just a use case of how you can manipulate, the, uh, manipulate and filter the data to get an output that you need. And you can share this data on 3D PDF as well to different uh, uh, departments within your company if they don't have ArcGIS Pro to view it, that is. So that brings me to the end of my demo. For the solution mix, I have uh, used Revit files for our new office building, Alice at Mediapolis. Some custom transformers have also been used for the data validation of FME Hub. The version of ArcGIS Pro used in the demo is 2.2, which is not the latest version. The current version is 2.4 uh, with data interoperability extension. A Microsoft Office was also used as the input file as I showed you earlier, as well as with the ArcGIS online account that was used to show the base map that I showed in the uh, ArcGIS Pro. 
So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your patience. Any questions? So here are the few questions. So the first one is, is the latest version of FME desktop supported by ArcGIS? When I was using the version 2.2 for ArcGIS Pro, uh, it was supporting FME version uh, 2019, like I showed. Uh, the latest version is supported in 10.7 ArcGIS desktop and uh, 2.1 onwards for ArcGIS Pro. I hope that answers the question for whoever posted that. The second one? I'll just read out the question. Does the DIE extension only work with the local data or can it be used to assess feature services and items in cloud storage? I think I already covered this in my presentation. So basically the question answers itself. You can actually use your local data, be it in SQL database or your local database. And you can also assess feature services as well as items in your cloud storage. So feature services will be either from your portal account or your ArcGIS online account. 